All right, so I've listed up here the nine functional groups that you guys should become very familiar with, all right? So let's go ahead and name these, all right? And this first functional group right here is called an alcohol. Alcohol. Whenever you see an OH group connected to an R group, this is called an alcohol. And hey, do any of you guys know what an R group is? Because the first time I saw an R bonded to something, I was like, hey, what atom does R stand for? I've never seen R on the periodic table before. And that's because it's not an atom. And R stands for any alkyl group, which is a fancy way for saying any carbon group. R is just a general way of saying, hey, a carbon group goes here. Okay, so hey, this could be like CH3OH, CH3, CH2OH, okay? Any carbon group goes on that OH is an alcohol, okay? Oh, and by the way, you guys, you might also hear OH being referred to as a hydroxyl group, okay? An SH bonded to an R, this stands for a thiol. Okay, so any SH group that you see connected to an alkyl group, a carbon group, is called a thiol, all right? This nitrogen that has three bonds coming off of it, this is just a nitrogen connected to any three things. This is called an amine. Let's spell that out for you. A-M-I-N-E, an amine, a nitrogen bonded to any three things, okay? And hey, there should be some lone pairs on that guy, sorry. Okay, so hey, this oxygen that's connected to an alkyl group on one side and an alkyl group on the other side. So hey, an oxygen that's connected to two carbon groups, this is called an ether. This R that's connected to a C that's triple bonded to a nitrogen, this is also known as a nitrile. N-I-T-R-I-L-E, a nitrile, okay? This R group that's connected to a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and also bonded to a hydrogen, this is known as an aldehyde. This almost identical thing to an aldehyde, except instead of a hydrogen here, it has an R here. This is known as a ketone. Okay, and these two down here are very, very similar cousins to an aldehyde and a ketone. You'll notice that the only difference between an aldehyde and this is called a carboxylic acid. But the only difference between an aldehyde and a carboxylic acid is that a C is directly connected to a hydrogen in this case. Here this C is connected to an O which is connected to a hydrogen, okay? Same thing between a ketone and this which is called an ester. E-S-T-E-R, okay? So hey, here a carbon is directly connected to an alkyl group, a carbon group. Here a carbon is connected to an oxygen which is connected to that alkyl group, okay you guys? All right, so what I wanted you guys to do tonight is go home, flashcard all nine of these functional groups so that you can recognize them on site, okay? What can make this a little bit easier for you is what I started telling you about these four, okay? Because these four are very similar to each other. So let me draw a line going down like this, okay? So, hey, an aldehyde and a ketone, we said that these are very similar, except an aldehyde has a hydrogen here and a ketone has an R there, right? So, Hey, this is a hydrogen, this is an R, that's the only difference between an aldehyde and a ketone. And hey, the only difference between an aldehyde and a carboxylic acid is that, hey, there's an oxygen there in the middle between the carbon and the hydrogen. Same thing for a ketone, the only difference between a ketone and ester is that there's an oxygen between the carbon and the alkyl group, okay? So, hey, that should make it a little bit easier for you guys, but make sure to go home and flashcard these so you can recognize them on site. Your professor will likely give you a problem, a big compound that has a bunch of functional groups in it. You'll have to circle the individual functional groups and say, hey, that's a nitrile, that's an aldehyde, that's a ketone, etc." okay, you guys? All right, so let's go ahead and do one more thing. Go ahead and put a box around these first three functional groups that we talked about. Okay, and I want you to do this because, hey, we have a special way of naming these. We classify these as being either primary, secondary, or tertiary, depending on how many alkyl groups, carbon groups, are present on them. Okay, so, hey, alcohols and thiols are classified the same way. Okay, so let's go ahead and do alcohols first. 
And alcohols are classified as being primary, secondary, or tertiary, depending on how many carbons are directly attached to the carbon that's attached to the OH. Okay, so hey, for example, if one carbon is attached to the carbon attached to the OH, it would be considered a primary alcohol. And oh my gosh, that sounds confusing in words, you guys. So let's see it in a picture. Okay, so let me just put this up for example, CH3, CH2, OH. Okay, so hey, here's the carbon. Here's the carbon directly attached to the OH. How many carbons are directly attached to this carbon right here? Just one, right? This one right here. Okay, so we call this a primary alcohol, a primary alcohol. And you abbreviate primary by saying one with a zero, superscripted zero next to it, okay? Primary alcohol. All right, so let's do another example. What kind of alcohol would this be considered? Okay, so this is a C, CH3, 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 OH, okay? All right, so what kind of alcohol is this? Primary, secondary, or tertiary? Okay, well, let's look at the carbon attached to the OH. Here's the carbon directly attached to that OH, okay? So how many carbons are directly attached to that carbon? Make sure to only count the carbons directly attached. So hey, there's one, two, three carbons directly attached to that carbon, right? So hey, we call this a tertiary alcohol. Tertiary alcohol. Okay? All right, so last example, you guys. What kind of alcohol would this be considered? CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. Primary, secondary, or tertiary, you guys? Okay, so here's the carbon directly connected to the OH, that's attached to the OH, right? How many carbons are directly attached to this carbon? Okay, so hands up, you guys. How many of you say that there's one directly attached to this carbon? How many of you guys say two? Okay, for those of you who said two, you made the same mistake I did when I took this class. There are one, two carbons that are attached to that carbon, right? But there's only one that's directly connected, right? So it directly means, hey, directly adjacent, right next to it, okay? This carbon is one carbon away from that carbon, right? This carbon's directly connected to that carbon, okay? So, hey, we only have one that's directly connected. Okay, so this would be called a primary alcohol because there's one carbon directly connected to the carbon that's attached to the OH, okay? So, hey, cool, I think you should have this alcohol naming thing down now, and if you know how to name alcohols, it's the exact same with thiols, except, hey, instead of an OH, this would be an SH here, okay? So, you know how to do alcohols, same thing with thiols. Let's move on to amines, okay? All right, and amines are classified as being primary, secondary, or tertiary, depending on how many carbons are directly attached to that nitrogen, okay? So, hey, for example, CH3 connected to a nitrogen with two other hydrogens attached. Okay, so, hey, this amine has one carbon directly attached, so it would be called a primary amine. Okay, so hey, let's look at uh, if we had changed this hydrogen to a, let's change this to a CH3, okay? This amine now has one, two carbons directly attached to that nitrogen, so we call it a secondary amine. A secondary amine, right? And hey, just to make sure you guys understand this directly attached thing, well, what would we call this amine? CH3, CH2, CH2, NH, H. Okay, well, what kind of amine would this be? Primary, secondary, or tertiary? It's still a primary amine, right? Because only one carbon is directly attached to this nitrogen, right? So hey, even though there are more carbons on this chain, this carbon is the one that's directly 
bonded to that nitrogen, okay? So this is still just a primary amine, okay? All right, so just to recap, the reason why we group compounds into these things called functional groups is because all compounds within a functional group react in similar, if not exactly the same ways. So that means all amines react the same as all other amines. All ketones react the same as all other ketones. And this is a huge deal, you guys, because there are hundreds of different amines. But if you learn how one reacts, you'll know, you'll know or at least be able to make a pretty good guess about how any other amine will react, okay? So I want you guys to go home, flashcard all nine of these functional groups. Memorize them all so that you can recognize them on site, okay? So for now, you don't know how they react, but you need to know that each functional group looks like this so that you can identify them in a compound, okay? All right, so let me erase this and put up an example problem that you could see where your professor gives you a compound and you have to circle the functional groups and name each one, okay? Okay, so your professor can give you something like this and say, hey, circle the functional groups and name them, okay? So what you're gonna do is, all right, let's just start here, and you should say, hey, there's an oxygen that's between two carbon groups. Hey, that's an ether. It's an oxygen between two R groups, two alkyl groups, two carbon groups, right? So, hey, what you do is you'd circle this, and you'd say, okay, this is an ether. Okay, then you'd look for any other functional groups in the compound, and you'll say, hey, Here's an OH, that looks like an alcohol, right you guys? But hey, make sure to check yourself because this OH group is connected to a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen. And you should be thinking, hey, this looks familiar to something else I've seen, a carboxylic acid, right you guys? So hey, yes you guys, this OH, this is an alcohol, but it's a special alcohol, it's a carboxylic acid. It's an alcohol that's connected to a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen, okay? So hey, you are right, this is a hydroxyl group, it is an alcohol, but hey, it's a specific one called a carboxylic acid because this OH is connected to a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen. So you'd circle this one and say, hey, it's a carboxylic acid. Okay. All right, so, so far there's three things to consider when looking for what's going to react in a compound. Formal charge is number one, which is full positive and full negative charges on atoms in a compound. Polarity is number two, which is partial positive and partial negative charges in atoms of a compound. And hey, for number three, we've got nine different functional groups that we wrote up here, okay? So, hey, now let's look at our fourth and final source of reactivity. Okay, so the fourth source of reactivity is resonance. So number four, this is resonance. 